One of the important <clears throat> things that changed after, uh, after shuttle retirement was the impact to spacewalks and to uh, robotic operations and really, I'll say, even maintenance on board the space station. Um, prior to the shuttle uh, retirement, we had a, a crew of seven, uh, typically, uh, and they would come up for and stay docked for approximately a week to the space station. And these seven people would be trained for a year or longer to go do very specialized tasks on the uh, on the space station, and even the order of those tasks. So there was a whole choreography. I used to think of it as a ballet. They would uh, they would work on this uh, this ballet for a year, then they'd get up there and they would go execute this ballet. And they were very very efficient. They knew just what to do, just how to do it. They had the tools with them. They had all the piece parts, and they'd go do this. And they were extremely efficient during those seven days. In fact, they worked very very hard. Very long days. Um, and not really a sustainable pace, but they're only up there for seven days. They do it, they undock and, and come home and they, can, and they can rest. And so the benefit to the ISS program was we got a tremendous amount of work done. In fact, we would save it up until these crews came. Well, the same is true for spacewalks. So if something would break, we could conceivably send the crew members who were living aboard ISS out. <clears throat> but these guys could have had not their last EVA or spacewalk training could have been six to eight months previous to this. So they were, they'd were they have to go relearn, uh, refresh their memories in a way of how to operate the suit and how to safely do it. They also had to learn all the tasks they were doing and how to translate those tasks and all the tether protocols and all those little minute details that are extremely important to do a, su a successful EVA. They'd have to learn those in a very short period of time. And when they're learning it, it's taking away from the things they could be doing in terms of particularly utilization on board space station. And so our philosophy before shuttle retirement was give all that to the shuttle crew members. We'll train them up and have them be extremely efficient, extremely well-versed on those tasks, and they could, do, they could do them very quickly. So in terms of spacewalks, it would be 30% to 50% more efficient for a shuttle crew member to go do a spacewalk and do these list of tasks that it would be to have somebody who is currently living on board ISS and say, hey, go do these list of tasks. And it's because they could do six runs in the neutral buoyancy lab here. The shuttle crewers could do six runs on the NBL here on the ground and perfect all the techniques, the body positions, all those little details that take time, uh, how exact translation paths, all that could be done and and just beat into your head, frankly. Uh, on board, you can't do that. There's no there's no ability to go do those things. And if you tried to do them by studying day after day after day, then you're not doing something else, kind of an opportunity cost. So tremendous benefit to the space station program of having these shuttle flights with seven crew members. Now we retire. Now there's no ability to do the, those anymore. The, the guys who go out and do spacewalks to repair any devices or to, to, to change the configuration outside of the space station, have to learn it while they're up there. When they're going through their training, they're going through a training and, and they learn basic tasks, but they don't understand or they don't know at the time what EVAs they're going to do and how those tasks fit together to create the EVA. So we train all that on board these days. And we allow them extra time to go execute those tasks uh, as compared with our tradition on board shuttles because they haven't been trained six times to do a specific EVA. They, in some cases, they've been trained three or four days before to go, to go do the EVA on board with products and, and some of the electronic tools we have. So that's a big change. Uh, but we, we, it changed not only how we do it on board, but it also changes how we train the crew members, the ISS crew members, before they even go on board. So we give them a lot of familiarization, familiarization of the suit and basic tasks that they're going to do, basic tether protocols, how to, how to execute the, all the elements of spacewalks. And in fact, we even identified what we call the Big 12, the big, uh, the most critical things that could fail externally, we actually train them in repairing or replacing those particular devices uh, so that they're well-versed in that. If they should fail, they can, they can go execute those tasks very efficiently. Uh, so a, a big far-reaching impact to how we, uh, to how we do it. And, and I talked a lot about EVA. Really, robotics is, again, similar. You have to train basic robotic skills, but as far as what specific robotics tasks you're going to do, you don't know it until you're actually on board and something fails and you have to go do it. So uh, uh, we actually have ability to provide some very uh, focused training when they're on board, um, but do a lot of skills-based training before they go so that we're prepared to go learn uh, the, the actual task uh, once they're on orbit. And we've been very successful in that. Um, without having to utilize too much of the crew time on board and still 
able to use the crew time majority for uh, for research and utilization, which was why we built the space station. Uh, is there a lesson to be passed down to future generations as a result of this? And, and the, the situation was we had planned this way. We were actually training our crews with a certain mindset, a certain ops concept, if you will. And now all of a sudden we had to change it. And we did. And we're very successful in that. And so I think that the message going forward uh, to people is uh, know that you have to create an ops concept and you have to train, but know that, they're, that you're going to change it over time. And in fact, you might change it very significantly at a specific time, which is really what happened to us. That's okay. So know that you have to be adaptable uh, going in. And in fact, the, the more you embrace the fact that you're going to change over time, I think the easier it is. So if you start, here's our plan, here's how we're going to train. But by the way, we know we're going to change. You're, then you're automatically looking for that change as, as, as uh, every day. Literally every day you're looking for better ways, more efficient ways of, of doing this. And I think that's a great mindset to have uh, going forward. I think it'll be really important for the, for the future programs to have that.